Oh no. Oh no. Oh dear. Oh boy. I think it's this. I like how they auto select time walk when there's black Lotus in the pack. They're like, you know what? If you don't auto select something, we're going to pick this blue power for you. And it's like, well, that's kind of nice, I guess, but it's still a black Lotus. I mean, we're going to take the black Lotus and someone's going to get a time walk and they're going to be like, whoa, and I'm going to be like, yeah, I know, buddy. I like, what about Black Lotus into turn three Sun Titan, get back Black Lotus. I also like Azorius Signet here. Try to table the Ravages. We could also take Azorius Signet, try to table the Sun Titan. I think Azorius Signet is the, the best option. Like this pack is not very exciting. I'm gonna take the Signet here. Titan might wheel right, which is what I'm, oh, Grim Monolith. Well, our artifact deck is looking pretty sweet right now. And if Flooded Strand or Solemn Simulacrum, Solemn, Solemn, I don't know, Solemn Simulacrum come back, and a Metal Worker. And now we know the exact kind of deck that we are. So we're gonna take the Metal Worker, and we're gonna be Metal Working. Metal Work it. And then Magic was like, oh, you want to be a metal worker deck, huh, stupid? <laughs> nice try. Well, that's something. I think it's probably just Wall of Omens here. I mean, it's possible we can just be blue-white. Blue-white metal works. I think it's probably better than Faithless looting here, and there is the potential for Sun Titan to come back, so that's Thousand Year Storm. Um, is it just Sword here? Could also be just Oblivion Ring. This is a good sword. I'm going to take it and not commit to the white here. Metal work good. But then you see a pack like this and you're like, oh, well, if we don't commit to white, we take something awkward. Colgon's Command is easily the best pick here. Scrubland, maybe? <sighs> Brain freeze, perhaps? Lotus Bloom? Interesting. Lotus Bloom it is. Hmm. Weirdly, the, the time walk did not table. Let's take the Day of Judgment. Sun Titan came back. Nice. Like it better than Ravages here, especially because most of our, like literally every card we have so far is three mana, so. All right, so we're definitely gonna be white. I could also see Day of Judgment. Oh, Gideon too, huh? Yeah, I think I'll take a Gideon. Oh, Elspeth Conquers Death came back? Wow. Maybe we're mono white metalworking. I'll take Null Priest here. Actually, Pride Mage is fine, and we could probably splash it somehow. I don't think it's Field of Ruin. Oh, Oblivion Ring comes back. So, wow, that's... So, okay. White is ext Colgon's command last pick. Wow, that's oh soaring. Okay, 
I guess we're going to soul ring. Easy game, easy life. Good grief. Who would have thought? Oh, we got Bribery, Mana Vault, and Balance and Coercive Portal. This is a pack, all right. I'm really reluctant to take a Bribery, which is double blue, I'll be honest. I kind of want a Mana Vault. Hmm. Balance could definitely wheel. I think it's Mana Vault, and I think our goal is to literally metalwork and draw big fat idiots. Not this kind of big fat idiot, though, because four black is not really where we want to be. I will take a Council's Judgment, though, because that card is banging. Uh, I actually like a Karn here a lot. That guy makes like four fours. <laughs> yep, we're taking a Karn here. Jitte. Interesting. I don't know if I care about a Jitte. I don't, I, I don't like top at all, but maybe top is fine. I'm just going to take the Jitte. I think Jitte is significantly better than top. And if we get a Stoneforge, then we have a Jitte. So, you know. Thank you. Aleshnorn. I like that. Evil Monkey. Thank you for the resub, buddy. Welcome back. Really appreciate it. So here's a funny story. Evil Monkey and I have been Facebook friends for quite a while. We've interacted a bunch, right? And Evil Monkey's name is also Evil Monkey in the subscriber Discord channel. So Mike B is also friends with Evil Monkey on Facebook, and they've also interacted a bunch. We have a lot of the same political opinions and things like that. So we, we interact a good amount. Apparently, Mike B was playing a bunch of commander games with Evil Monkey, and, and, and Evil Monkey never introduced themselves as, as their actual name to Mike B. So Mike B was like, wait, are you this person? And, and they were like, yeah. And they like never told Mike B. So Mike B had no idea they were interacting with this person that they had already known for so long. It's like, it's like if, if my best friend makes a username in a game or something and they don't tell me that that's who they are. So I'm like interacting with this person in the game and having a good time. And then they finally, like, I finally figure out it's the same person just by happenstance. And I'm like, dude, we know each other. <laughs> Why haven't you said anything? I made Mike B real mad in the commander game. Oh, Mike B, Mike B has a tendency to get salty sometimes. Yes, that is definitely correct. It's either Hangerback or Gilded Lotus here. I actually think we have enough ramp where I'm just going to take the Hangerback here because the versatility is nice. Plus, I'm almost tempted to take Valky because I feel like we could probably splash it somehow. I think it's better than Lingering Souls. Plus we have Coligon's command, so if there's any weird way we can be Mardu, that seems cool. <sighs> yeah, Linvala is actually playable. Ancient Grooge. Yeah, I'll take a Tendrils. Wow, we have Brain Freeze and Tendrils. Too good. Welder now. Well now. Let's move you here. I countered his five cost commander that I used a mana vault to play with mana <laughs> I mean, that seems fair to me, dude. 
Um, okay. So I guess we're going to take this Mox. Because that's the thing you do. Because that's what heroes do. Um, I would like to take Coalition Relic as well, but it's a Mox. So the answer is no. This is looking like a, this is a lot of artifacts. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ten artifacts so far. Lotus, Mox, Soul Ring, Mana Vault, Grim Monolith. That's a lot of fast mana. Plus right now we're just mono white. I'm going to put these two in the sideboard. Thran Dynamo. Worm Coil Engine. Lodestone. Teferi and Consecrated Sphinx. You got a Lotus that you'll never see. It's it's too real when you guys actually say it. I mean, we're probably close to 15 lands because Mox and Lotus, but I'm not going to go much lower than that because I still want to make sure we can cast our things. I love Teferi. I, I don't know if we're a Lodestone Golem deck. We have a lot of non-artifact spells. I don't think we need Thran. I think I'm just going to go with the Teferi because we can easily splash it. No, and then you get a Worn Power Stone anyway. Um, I think we're just taking Worn Power Stone. Also, Rakdos Signet, which just by itself lets us cast, uh, lets us cast Tybalt, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Do we have any other way to cast this? Not really. Like, Lotus is only going to make one type of mana, unfortunately. I think we're going to just go with Worn Power Stone here. Oh, Fracture Identity? <laughs> wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Bob. Hmm. So I kind of like Orzhov Signet here because if we get the... There's also a Boros Signet going around. Polluted Delta doesn't do anything for us right now. Yeah, I'm just going to take Orzhov Signet. I think... Oh, we have an Azorius Signet, too, which is great. That also helps us cast these blue cards. Like, we'd have to literally get Tundra or Hollowed Fountain for these to do anything. I'm not sure we're going to play Lotus Bloom, either. I'm just going to take this. Torrential Gear Hulk, that can hit uh, Path to Exile. And that's the end. All right. Mana tithe it is. <laughs> it's like an Ahiri in case we get a red source somehow. Nothing else in this pack is even close to playable for us. Inkwell Leviathan. That might be the last missing piece. Nope, just kidding. This was the last missing piece. Wow. I... I'm that tabled. Okie dokie. Uh, Gearhulk can still not heat, hit <laughs> Fractured Identity, no matter how much mana you have. Uh, okay, now we get to take an Emery as well. well this deck really got better. <laughs> take out Linvala. She doesn't really follow the plan here. Tezzeret. Tezzeret. Tez. Tezzeret. Oh, I got a fracture. I didn't it was an instant. End of your turn. Get rid of your, like, Gristlebrand. Uh, I'm just going to take Leovold because... No one deserves it anymore. You just, you've, you've ruined it. I think we're definitely taking out one of these five drops. Oh, Dre, sure. Wow, this deck looks, looks, looks like something, all right. Um, we have seven creatures. Karn makes creatures. I think we can board in Lesh Norn, maybe? Because we already have Inkle Leviathan and Karn and Sun Titan. Is that weird? 
I don't know. Mm, you're going to be more like a two drop. Let's be real. I think sword comes out. Yeah. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think it's sword and like, I think it might be Gideon Jura, even though Gideon Jura is very good. Maybe we want just as many five drops as possible because they're just, they're good. I mean, artifacts. This guy doesn't count because obviously if you have him, you have to have him in play for it to be even relevant. Plus this and this, 10. I think that's a good amount, and I think we can probably take the sword out. We can also probably take one five drop or the Eleshnorn out. Or Day of Judgment. We can board in Day of Judgment. Is Sun Titan still needed? I think Sun Titan's still fine. It still gets back Lotus. It still gets back uh, Oblivion Ring, Emery if it dies. I, I think Sun Titan's a great threat. Don't think we're playing Lotus Bloom, though. Uh, I think Wall of Omens is great. Holds down the fort. Draws us a card. Like, I, I think... It's, it's also get it back with Sun Titan. Like, if we take a Wall of Omens, Sun Titan just gets worse. We're also going to... Let's remember to take a picture of this deck so that we know what we can search for with Tezzeret. So this is nine. And then five, six, seven. This is nine, seven. Plus a Lotus plus an Azorius Signet, plus an Orzhov Signet. I think that's probably okay. Okay. Put you over here. I'm gonna be like, what can we get with our Tesseret? This deck looks pretty sweet. Uh, my concern with Day of Judgment is I don't want to kill my own uh, Emery or my own Metalworker, but... I mean, I, I don't think the decks that swarm are are that common, is, is really the thing. Plus, like, if they do kill an Oblivion Ring, we can get it back with a Sun Titan, or, you know, if we mill it with Emery... I, I, I'm partial to the interactions that exist because of Sun Titan. <clears throat> Karn, Eleshnorn, five really good five drops. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm sure we're going to go, we're going to draw terribly and go one, two with this deck. But we shall see. Five man, five land, two mana rock, opening hand. Let's do it. Let's bring it. Maybe all our opponents will scoop and drop after game one. Maybe. But that also, that's not the same satisfaction as if just I, you know, I actually won my games and got to play them out. So... Oh man, our opponent's 1-0. Jeez. Yep, there we go. You know what? It's, could be worse. There's already signaling a worn power stun into turn four Karn. I'll take it. It won't happen, but I'll well, maybe it'll happen. They play one more thing. We play Worn Power Stone. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Did 
Do we play around mana ties? Like being able to play Karn and destroy one of their lands would be utterly insane when they didn't have a two drop. There's no pressure, but yeah, you know what? Are you guys saying to go for it or not go for it? God, I can't, I can't do it. Oh, interesting. We would have lost our Karn. They would have played, we would have exiled a land. They would have played Containment Priest and killed our Karn. I also did not draft Lotus to just throw it away either, so. Okay, now they're tapping out. So we can actually Council's Judgment a threat and then also play Karn. Yeah, that seems pretty good. I like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine. Hmm. We have to get rid of Giver of Runes, unfortunately, because otherwise she just protect. Wait, actually, or from Colorless, sure. Yep, if they have an answer for Wall, we lose our Karn, which is rough. Don't have an answer for my Wall. It would make me sadder than anyone. I don't want to lose my wall. I don't want to lose my car either. I mean, this is okay because we're just going to kill their biggest threat and plus four car in here. So, oh, they didn't do anything. Oh, dear. Choose target player. What if they exile mana tithe because they're like, well, they got a million mana now, so what's the point? Balance. <laughs> they had more cards than us and they had more creatures, so it's like, well, balance doesn't do anything. Actually, that's just worse, right? Well... Oh, they just f 6 We could have definitely slammed Leshnor in there. Okay. Well, I think we're in good shape. Actually, I mean, maybe we shouldn't have even played this. I don't know. Is it non-token? Yeah, okay. So Hangerback Walker still does the business. Armageddon. Unfortunately, we don't really have a lot of great permanents to start the game with other than Giver of Runes here. Okay, we just win the game. <laughs> well, we didn't see Manatide, so we have no idea if that's a thing. 
But we also didn't see a ton of... Yeah, now we're seeing our ring in Day of Judgment for sure. Also, Gideon, Elspeth, they all seem very, very good against this matchup. I mean, Armageddon seems terrible against us. We have Mox, Mana Vault, Soaring, Monolith, Signet, Signet, Worn Power Stone. Uh, who requested the coward step? Okay. Okay, buddy. I don't think I'm even taking anything out of here. Like, yeah, I could, I could actually see Linvala instead of Inkwell, to be quite honest. That seems like a good, a good switch. Uh, Jitte is great. We just don't have enough creatures to put it on. So I'm not going to like, like Wall of Omens is out. Uh, I wouldn't consider Lush Norn a great creature to put it on. And, uh, Sun Titan's six mana. So it's really a little too late. And that means we have four other creatures. Emery, Metalworker, Linvala, and Hangerback Walker. Like, unfortunately we're just, I mean, like I love Jitte, but this is just not a Jitte deck because it just takes put Inky and we just took Inky out. We literally just took him out to put Linvala in instead. <clears throat> Emery doesn't ever swing, that's true. So basically three. You know what? I'll keep this hand. It's a little expensive, but well, there's so many cards we can hit that make it bananas. Second Signet definitely helps, that's for sure. Well, that does make things worse. Uh, no reason to block here. We can easily pump this guy next turn. Put him back! <laughs> Put the inkwell in the deck. Okay, nothing yet, huh? Ain't seen an well yet. Oh, what up, Greasy Cleric? Yeah, I'll take another two. So if they play balance here, they lose a land. Oh dear. So this is three and this is four. I mean, I'm pretty sure now we're just going to actually block the Thalia and pump the hanger back. Oh my god. And if we hit a land, we could just slam a Lush Norn. I don't know where this island came from, but it's making me uncomfortable. This is interesting. <laughs> I mean, because, like, I was going to... Uh, eh. Like, I was going to block Thalia anyway, so it's like, I, I don't know what's going, I don't know, it's a weird. Four cards in hand. Gideon Jura. I 
Oh, interesting. I mean, if they balance now, like they go land, balance, we lose a card, which can easily be O-Ring. Uh, we lose our two Thopters, they lose a l two lands. So... I, I don't know, this feels like we're way ahead, but... See, they go land, and I go balance. No balance. Tef Tarifi, okay. But I mean, I have Gideon. Okay. This feels okay. Oh dear, that's a lot of mana. One, two, three, four. Hmm. A teferi of my own. Draw. A human soldier. I mean, if they condemn here, we're just going to go O-Ring, so. <laughs> you got it. Unfortunately, none of these cards are instants, so. On the bright side, balance does not do anything about planeswalkers or enchantments, so. Wall of Omens. You got it. Bryn Wingmare, okay. Tough boy. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel good about any of this. Oh my fucking God. Oh dear Lord. One, two, soaring. Mana Vault. Six. Eight. Yeah, I got a mana. I'm gonna waste it. I mean, the thing is, even if they balance, I just lose the two Thopters and keep the Aleshnorn, so. And then we still have, like, Tefri. <laughs> oh, Winds of Abandon. Okay. I was expecting Fracture Identity, to be quite honest. One... What do you got? Five, six, seven. We have one, two, three, four, five. All right, so balance doesn't even affect this. Sure. Okay, now we actually get to keep lands from balance.
Oh boy. Four, five, six, one, one. I actually can't get anything back, so I think we're just going to play Linvala here. Like, I don't want to play Sun Titan. If they have a way to get back their own Teferi with, uh, by killing the O-Ring, I don't really want to lose the Sunlight. Like, if they, I, I don't know. There's no reason to play Sun Titan. It's, it's going to have to get through this. And then once it does, then we just lose all our guys to balance. Yeah, that's pretty good. Actually, now nah, I'm just going to hold back. We can ultimate Teferi next turn, which is pretty bananas. I feel like that's going to win us a game much faster than. We might actually plus one one more time just to keep him around. <laughs> well, Aleshnorn's gone, Sun Titan is gone, Linvala is gone, and Inkwell Leviathan is gone. They can get like Emery, Metalworker. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> this is one, two, three, four. We took one out, which is five. Metalworker and Emery are six and seven. Yeah, this is actually terrible. Wall of Omens, got it. All things considered, <laughs> bribery is just a fucking can trip. This is a five mana Wall of Omens. I like it. And the funny thing is we can also tuck our own wall of omens. <laughs> and then when we draw it, it's like we're not we're not actually skipping a land drop, so. Like even if they got torrential gear, I'll get just a big body because they can't cast anything from their own graveyard except condemn, which is not a legal spell at that point. Uh, you actually can't fracture your own things. Oh, yes, you can, actually. Wow. But also, you meant the wall that we don't control. I thought you couldn't hit the things you control, but the, the reason I thought that is because it's each player other than its controller. So if you do it on your own thing, your opponents get the thing, you don't get the thing. So, like, in my head, I'm like, that's not an option. You can't do that. Okay. Okay, go go to the second main. Repeal their own wall. Sure. I wish they repealed my wall instead. Student of warfare, sure. Sure. You could fracture on Lord of the Bit if your opponent has no creatures. It's true. It's not a lie. We have a lot of mana. Uh, one Bane Fire here would be really clutch. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're just gonna. Okay, that I like. Um.
make a dude. <coughs> I kind of just want to play Metal Worker here because um, if they do have if they do balance, like we're way further on. They have nine lands. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And um, you know the one card in their hand is a wall of Owens. They're going to replay that thing. The funny thing is we actually could have uh, fractured identity the student and potentially pumped it up to like a million this turn. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, one of which would have went to this. So we could have put it at level six. <laughs> That's pretty good. Karn making seven sevens just like uh just like Richard Garfield intended. So next time we ultimate Teferi. And I wanted to keep him on board so we still have ways to uh oh Jesus, what is this? Their own Aleshnorn? Oh. Yeah, that's fine. I mean worst case scenario, I fractured identity of that guy. Vintage Cube is definitely by who casts the most walls. Oh, I can't. You're right. I can do that, though. <laughs> All right. Well, we're just going to emblem here because that's what we do. Because that's what heroes do. Two cards. Council's Judgment of the Planes. I'm going to get that Planes. They gave me the Planes. Look at this. Sun Titan has nothing to hit. Um... We got one, two, three blockers, one, two, three attackers. We could just... Oh, they can't even level this guy up because of Linvala. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. It's funny because we can actually fracture identity this. Whenever you exile target permanent opponent controls. This isn't even... Is this... What's, what's, um, you guys are saying you can't, can't. What are you fucking referring to? So, like, if I fracture it into my wall, get a, get the wall, draw a card, Tefri's emblem. I'm not going to do that because there's no reason to, to rush this game. But where does the, is Tefri targeting or is the colorless emblem targeting? That's my question. I think it's the colorless emblem. I don't think this is a colored source. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Okie dokie. That was a while ago. I should have read that it was like a minute ago, so. Get him. <laughs> okay, that's the end of the game. We would have drawn Black Lotus, exiled probably, I don't know, a land, drawn a card from Teferi, exiled a land. It doesn't matter. Oh, I was going to concede. What happens if you concede after you've won? I don't know. Well, I mean, you can definitely be considered playing with your food, but I, I definitely make mistakes when I I get too greedy. I'm like, oh, you have a good creature? 
that's no threat to me, I'm still going to counsel's judgment to get it off the board. That's like a, a very common thing that I do. I try to minimize the threats that I can see, even if I'm even if those things do nothing against me in in, the, in those moments. Soaring, give you Jura. Not entirely the same. Soaring here would be nice. Mox would be nice. Lotus would be nice. Okay, I see. I see. Not going to play Hanger Backwalker here. There's just no incentive to do so. Because like then I'm gonna play Metalworker on three, and I'd and like if we're not gonna upgrade this until turn four, we just have a one one on board, and it's just I'd rather just make a million mana later. On turn four, I'd rather reveal one to two artifacts, and then have eight mana. Sure, you got it. Old kitchen stinks. It was definitely, oh, it was definitely one-sided. Um, but the problem is once I disrespect the one-sidedness, that's when they're like, okay, do this thing. And I'm like, oh no. Do they have mana drain? They always have mana drain, don't they? Oh, they didn't have mana drain. Well, that's fascinating. Color me fascinated. You got it. Um, sort of fire and ice. Consecrated Sphinx we have an answer to. So they can go tracker, sword... Yeah, I'm just going to put Consecrated Sphinx by itself. It's the most obnoxious and they might want it the most. Oh, they took the four. <laughs> sure. Tireless Tracker. Got it. Land. Played a Forest. Got it. Sword of Fire and Ice. Got it. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five. We have nine mana. Could go Sun Titan Oblivion Ring. Feel this guy again. Nine mana. One, two, three, four. Oh, we actually don't have nearly as much mana as I thought we did. So I think we're just going to go Karn. Create a 2-2. Two, two. And then we're going to Oblivion Ring. Probably the Sword here. Or the Tireless Tracker. They're going to attack with whatever is left over. If they attack with Kitchen Finks, it still dies unless they equip the sword. Let's get rid of Tireless Tracker here. I just don't think they should have more access to cards.
Well, whatever this is, is acidic slime killing oblivion ring. Yep. See, this is why Sun Titan's good. <laughs> now they get to play their land, get another clue. And sure. And I'm definitely blocking. Reveal this and this. So I got four. Cancel. Let's reveal the top two, see what happens. If they're both artifacts, oh, a planes and a path. I like that. Or, a, you know, a, what do you call it in a path? Yep. Reveal these two. Done. Sun Titan. Let's get rid of your stupid sword. Then you play land, you crack six, and you trade here. Still don't like this guy. Destroy a tapped creature. Like, we can actually kill this guy. They have to re-equip. And just make him attack face. Being able to get path next turn is also pretty good, so. Also, if we get, like, Fractured Identity, we can get rid of the sword, equip the sword, start attacking with Sun Titan and sword. That seems good. I'm just, I don't think they have a way to deal one point of damage to my Sun Titan. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, well. I mean, we can get Path to Exile over here. That seems relatively safe. <laughs> All right, that's weird. Put a card into your hand. Give me that guy. Definitely not attacking here. Get out of here. Now they all have to attack, so we just get to eat them all, right? Like, that seems good. I mean, they have five cards, two clues, and a sword. I, I, I don't think they're in terrible position. Here comes this Avenger of Zendikar followed by a land. No. I have no idea what's going on. So real the top two cards. Emery Mana Vault. Give me that Emery, I guess. Or you're gonna give me Mana Vault, rather. <laughs> 
Oh, you gave me Emery? What? Uh, that seems worse. What did we hit? Lotus, Grim Monolith, Aleshnorn, Plains. Oh dear. We'll play a land. Well, getting in there doesn't really do much. I'd like to actually throw my Wall of Omens away here, get it back. I mean, if they go like Crater Hoof, they still have to all attack Gideon. Having Gideon on board right now is pretty, pretty good. Yep, that's fine. So Gideon takes seven here. I, I don't think I care about that. I guess we can hard cast that. Well, this is fascinating. What are our options here? We definitely want to get back the wall and trade with the beast. I'm definitely just killing this guy. <laughs> I feel like it's revealed the top two here. Oh, councils and Karn liberate. <laughs> well, yeah, you really got your, you know, it's your work cut out for you here. Let's reveal one, two, three. Done. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, okay, we have way more than enough. All right, well, feels like we're doing okay. I don't know what they can have to deal with Inkwell Leviathan here. Next turn, we can also just get Karn Liberate out of our out of our zone. <coughs> I mean, upheaval is a threat, I suppose, but we have so much mana. I also kind of want to just cast Black Lotus and put it on the board. Okay, we just win the game. Man. Day of Judgment again looks good. So does Linvala, actually. I mean, against the... Um, against the blue deck, though, we're probably not taking out Inkwell this time. <clears throat> I 
man, everything looks so good. Tezzeret, we can probably take out a Tezzeret. Choose the form of the Desire. <laughs> That's a little Ghostbusters reference right there, my dude. It is Ghostbusters, my dude. <clears throat> we do need some white mana. Wow, who knew white was such a powerful color? I mean, this is a lot of mana. <laughs> do need white source, though, or else we have no real action. Actually, what? Hold on. One, two, three, four, five. If we draw Inqua Leviathan, we just cast it on turn two. Oh, white source. Oh, you, you crazy kid. I feel like we just play Power Stone because it's actually the same amount of mana, and it's just on board, so... Plus, if we rely less on Metalworker, uh, and well, then we don't have to worry when we Day of Judgment and kill it. Oh, they missed the third land drop. Oh, that's no good. Um, Karn, Path, Teferi, Island. Well, not ideal. I'm just going to hold back here. I mean, I'm almost tempted to block and then, like... Eh, we can just take two. I really... I mean, I, I don't know. Like, the decision seems so minor right now that it's, it seems negligible almost what we do. <clears throat> I'm just going to Oblivion Ring this guy because, like, we just have nothing else to do. And if they kill the Oblivion Ring, it's a nice situation where, like, nothing happens. Oh, old tree speaky. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. <clears throat> White source would be good. We're going to lose to two double white cards in our hand. <laughs> Three double, four double white cards in our hand. It's going to be good times. Get in there. Keep doing the damage. <clears throat> guys look how good our hand is with one white mana a lotus would be great because it lets us cast two spells one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven mana yeah that would be real good i'm at a point where we can just day if we draw land here that'll do pig that'll do Turn your love around. I'll trade with either. I'm totally fine. <clears throat> What's the deal? Yeah, I could see adding one more planes. I mean, we have nine white sources. <coughs> Rex Sage straight into the bin? That's interesting, because I can just recast it off of Emery. Uh, no, I will we'll take that. Blah, blah, blah. Um... One, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> ECD gets back Teferi when it when it procs. That's pretty good. 
Uh, four, five, six, seven. Do we just put them to two? Probably. I don't actually care about Metalworker that much. I don't know how blue green deck deals with a an Alesh Norn with four mana, but I'm sure I'll find out. That guy just dies twice. <laughs> well, he gained four, though. That's pretty good. <coughs> All right. Well, we have not lost a game yet. Metal Worker will remember this. <laughs> God, I hope not. That's going to look real bad. <clears throat> Mini Man, good game. Good game. Yeah, our deck turned out pretty good. And you also got mana screwed in that second game, so. Hopefully, playing over main deck Finks. I think it hasn't been two in a row. Oh, I see. This is a first turn Karn? Yeah, that's pretty good. Do I do? Do I first turn make a 3-3? Three, three? Yes, probably. Okay, let's do that. <clears throat> One, two, Mana Vault, Karn, make a 3-3. Three, three. Okay. <laughs> Oh, dear Jesus. <laughs> well, that'll do, pig. That'll do. All right. I guess we'll just submit since we saw literal nothing. This one's not as good, but still still gets still gets the work. <clears throat> I mean, I guess if we draw... There's so many things we can draw. Oh, Man Vault? No? Look at this. I just got, just got planes this time. Unexciting. Well, that was a good turn, man. Next turn, we'll be working some metal. You guys like working metal? <clears throat> oh, this guy. Ooh, I'm going to bounce your... Bouncing the Signet doesn't actually do anything because we're still going to play Metal Worker and it still gives us a lot of mana. <clears throat> actually, Fractured Identity on this, bouncing this, oh, that seems pretty decent. Let's do that if we you know get the chance. Well, not yet, I guess. <laughs> Okie dokie. I feel like they're really bitter about our, our last game. Oh, big brims. <clears throat> yeah, take, take, take the damage, I guess. So this is actually another Day of Judgment deck we just didn't know. So we're, a little, we're a little far from that. <clears throat> we have to actually Fractured Identity this guy or else they, uh, they just bounce whatever we do for Fractured Identity. Three, four, five. <clears throat> Two cards. Let's see if one of them is a counter spell. It was not. <clears throat> Let's bounce the brims. Next time we can play Gideon. Kill the porcelain legionnaire. Rocky McChester Flex doesn't appreciate your ass. It's true. Sad. But absolutely true. I guess we take six, seven, eight. This is almost lethal. Huh. 
<clears throat> yep, let's concede here. We got one more draw. Talarian Academy's not going to do it. Okay. So we're going to bring in Day of Judgment and Linvala. Take out the Tez again. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, plus two Signets. Like, it's 11 sources of mana, of white, plus Black Lotus. It's 12 sources of, of white mana. This should be good enough. <clears throat> Uh, keep, I believe. Yeah, we're on the play. We can keep. Get that big Grimm's. Interesting. Kind of like Orzov's signet here a little bit better, actually. Because I don't want to have to use the Grim Monolith next turn to cast Linvala. <clears throat> so we'll just play Linvala next turn. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Always a good time. That's pretty good. <clears throat> Seems good. It's kind of fucking annoying. This is how it goes, right? You go completely undefeated in the first two rounds, and then the last round you just kind of like, why not Path Mother? Because when we play Linvala, Mother gets shut off automatically. And this doesn't do anything for us right now. Like, we have nothing that targets any of their creatures, so if we Path the Mother, like, we're not saving their creatures from anything. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> okay, well... This is where they swords to plowshares her. Yeah, I just can't. I can't beat it when they have it all. Like I don't know what to do. Like <clears throat> turn one mother, turn two five mana Teferi, turn three three mana Teferi, bounce two my things. Like we had a great start in game one, but that was obviously a fluke. Like <clears throat> so, you know that's just kind of fucking obnoxious to be honest. Like it's really just <sighs> kind of just like the recurring theme, you know. <laughs> it's yeah, it's like a recurring nightmare. Two one 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 two one. Well, it's not that they drew the power. Like, we also drew Grim Monolith. Like, they drew things to do with it, which is the biggest part. Like, there's hands where I'm like, Soul Ring, Black Lotus, Mana Vault, turn one, go. And then I just have nothing to do. And, of course, they fucking mind twist us, obviously. <clears throat> Oh, 
How come Gideon doesn't how come <clears throat> Tefer doesn't have trample? Or Gideon. Gideon, I can't think of the names. <laughs> you won all those games? Yeah, I just can never win the one that matters. Like it's a story of my life, I'll be honest with you. Like I hate to be all sad and mopey because this has been a fun draft, but it's fucking true, dude. Like I've I've described myself before as not being a closer. Like I just never it's not my thing. I can do very well in <laughs> standard rounds and things. But uh, <clears throat> I'll be, I'm hard pressed to like fucking actually win an event or a what have you, which is why I have three trophies or four and J Bro has 39 or whatever. So, what are you going to do? Right. But that's the thing. Like, I don't draw my Black Lotus before they do. That's what happens. Like, that's the, that's the way the game goes. So, like, I mean, it's, it's one thing. Like, we can, we can attribute it to luck for sure. But that doesn't change the luck, you know? Like, <clears throat> Gideon and a Lotus. <laughs> Coffee is for closers. <laughs> it really is. It really is. I mean, they don't have much going for them on the board, but they still have Teferi, which can bounce one of our things. They have other Teferi. So they're drawing like three cards this turn by, by, by themselves. They have Lingering Souls in the graveyard. <clears throat> so they have a total of like five cards plus a Lingering Souls. And it's like... All right, well. Sure. <laughs> Legion's Landing. Boy, this is a, this is a fucking weird deck, man. <clears throat> yep even day of judgment isn't greater because they have selfless spirit so it's like okay what will we draw next <clears throat> so if we kill the selfless spirit, I mean, then they, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, this is fine. Oh no. Well, you know what? Sure. <clears throat> you got it. No, that's the thing. Like, 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 Orzov Signet in a in a presumably aggro deck. You have Mother of Runes in a presumably control deck. Legion's Landing with five mana Teferi. Student of Warfare. Like, I don't even know what I'm playing against. It's like this weird like aggro control mishmash. <clears throat> and like with mono planeswalkers, I, I don't really understand. I don't know. It's fine. It's a fine deck, I'm sure. Yep, and if I knew they had Elspeth, I would actually have just killed the Selfless Spirit because then, you know, it would be dead. But I did not. <clears throat> so. <sighs> really? You just made that? Oh, you're just... I don't understand. Okay. <laughs> sure, play an Emery. Day of Judgment and Elesh Norn. Elesh Norn. Yep. All right. That'll do.
every one of these dead to an Elish Norn. And they give me an island instead of a Talarian Academy. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Had a good run. Great deck. See you next time.